Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And together as a married couple, we are re-watching, reviewing, scoring, and ranking all the Marvel movies in the MCU. So if you want to, you can go ahead and you can play along with us. We made the score sheet available to you down below in the description of this video. You can go ahead and you can download it, or you can fill it out online. Either way, it's a lot of fun. That's why we're having fun with it. And we want to hear from you, you know? Go ahead and let us know what you thought about uh, the movies and your rankings, and if you thought our scores were right, they were wrong. Um, you can actually impact the scores, because when it comes to our final rankings, once we've ranked and reviewed all of the movies in the franchise, we are going to go back and do an episode that is our complete ranks. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to that, 25% of the deciding factor will be your votes as well as ours. So it's definitely worth doing, especially if you think we got something monumentally wrong. Exactly. This is where you have a chance to change the score. Now let's go on to our review for Avengers Endgame. So our first category is lead male, and in this case, lead male likability. We have the two heroes, our two leads, as Captain America and Iron Man. And if you disagree with us, go ahead and let us know in the comments. We'd love to discuss it with you. But this has been pretty consistent for how we viewed the Avengers movies. It has always seemed to be a, uh, a sort of a friendship story slash frenemy story between Iron Man and Captain America. In this one, it's sort of um, repairing the damage from Civil War and getting back on the same side. For our two lead males, I said for both Steve Rogers and Tony Stark, I gave him a score four. I want these two guys in my inner circle of friends. Yeah, I agree. They got a perfect score, four out of four for both of them. I want them in my group of friends. Lead male, and in this case, lead male bang ability. Um, for me, they both get a perfect score, five mm. out of five. This is more than a bang. Um, I felt that both of these guys were not just obviously very attractive and pleasing to look at, um, but their personalities were fun but heartfelt. They were truly genuinely good guys i gave them i gave i gave them both a zero so i said no thanks i'm good i fully support a marriage with them i mean you know i'm not angry at all at my wife for saying that she wants to marry captain america and you know tony stark that's i mean i've been pretty much saying it for captain america all along but... yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much i had to get used to that one real fast <laughs> our next category is lead male and lead male relatability how relatable are these characters uh for Captain America, for Steve Rogers, I gave him a two. I said, it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. For Iron Man, I gave him a three. I said, it's the best parts of me. I actually had the exact same score. Um, wow. I felt like, you know, the same thing with Captain America. I, I would love to say that Captain America is the best parts of me because I think he's supposed to be the embodiment mm -hmm. of the best parts of all of us, the best parts of yeah. what the heart and soul of this country is supposed to be. Um, but it was more Iron Man in this one that I really felt that connection and, and relatability factor with because of the family factor. So next up is our villain. Um, Thanos, obviously, is the yeah. villain in this one. I think his end goal was, he stated it pretty much at the end of the movie, um, that he was going to rip up the entire universe down to the last atom and rebuild it kind of in his own vision so that everyone, no one remembers what used to be. So how many people does this affect? Uh, it's a five out of five, a perfect score for Thanos. You get to, you know, the entire universe. Let's not call it a perfect score. I don't <laughs> want to say Thanos got a perfect score. That's just. No. His end goal is terrible. It's, yes. it's perfectly terrible. That's a perfect score for Terrible. Let's just take the perfect out. It's terrible. <laughs> he has a five. So next up is how strong is the villain compared to the hero? So I actually gave him a score of three. I said that he is wow. stronger than the hero instead of significantly stronger, which I believe is what he scored in the past. Um, I think part of that for me is that his whole, I'm going to go off on a planet and retire and live in isolation by myself. There was just an element about him that seemed really sad. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he wasn't this super villain full of rage and hate, but he was what you would expect him to deserve. 100% by himself, no friends, no family, totally isolated. I gave Thanos a uh, 4 out of 4. I said that he was significantly stronger than our heroes. Uh, he kicks the crap out of both Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man all at the same time. Uh, he doesn't even have the fin Infinity Stones when he does it. Uh, actually, one, you know, uh, my friend Dave Power says that he's like, I don't get how that's able to happen. Like how he's like even more stronger without the gauntlet than he was with the gauntlet. Um, so, point. yeah, so that, that, that was a good point that I thought, you know, he brought up. 
Um, but they did say that Thanos was the most powerful being in the entire galaxy. You know, he did kick, kick the crap out of the Hulk, although I think he did it still in that time too. The only one that kind of like got the best of him, there were two, were the two females. Scarlet Witch kind of owned him for a little bit and he had to use oh, yeah. uh, a trick where like he was raining fire. And the other one was Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was kind of almost getting the gauntlet right out of his hands. And then he had to grab Infinity Stone and knock her out. Do you care about the villain? This was a very hot topic in the last Infinity War because I like Thanos and uh, Bethany almost divorced me. You can check that out on the YouTube card right there if you want to go ahead and see that. So what was your score this time? This time I gave him a three out of four. I hate that guy. Past Thanos coming into the future is even more of a dick <laughs> than current Thanos. I mean, I didn't think that was possible. But he has a line about just making everyone suffer. It was never personal before. And I felt that in the first one. The first one didn't seem like it was personal. It seemed like he, he had a goal, he had a vision, he executed it. All right? Hey. You, he, you don't want him to win, but you tip your hat to, to a, a game well played. Now, for... <laughs> Everything that Thanos hated about us yeah. was what I personally think makes us so wonderful and exceptional as people. It was our audacity, our unification, our willingness to go the extra mile for each other mm. and to help each other and to defend each other. I totally hated him, but I really savored the moment when he said that because as angry as it made me, it showed how much our heroes were getting to him. Villain bang ability, not a chance, not a, it's going to be a cold, cold icy day in hell before Thanos ever gets even in the same room with me. So, that's definite zero. I want to marry the guy. No, just kidding. Zero, too. <laughs> side, side characters! Character. Uh, there are a ton of side characters in this one. Uh, we mainly limited it to people that were going out for the Infinity Stones. They were, they were part of the time heist. Ant-Man, Thor, Nebula, War Machine, Rocket, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Hulk, Captain Marvel we put in there, even though she's not part of the time heist. We thought she was a pretty significant part in the beginning, a pretty significant part in the end. And Pepper Potts and Morgan Stark are one entity. Yes. Yeah, they are they're they are, they are one entity. My ones are War Machine, Captain Marvel, and Hawkeye. I can't believe you gave Hawkeye a one. He was on mm -hmm. his dark and twisty journey, and he lost his family, and up until the moment of uh getting the Soul Stone, everything about Black or everything about Hawkeye was about him. My ones went to War Machine. We agree on that. And Captain Marvel. I thought Captain Marvel was just in there basically to, you know, kick butt in the end and, like, destroy, destroy Thanos' ships. Pretty much everyone else got a two for me, with the exception of Thor, who got a three, because I thought he, he provided the most humor for me. One of my favorite moments with Thor was when he's talking to his mom, and he's trying, you know, again, he's fighting back, fighting back tears, and he's like, yeah, you're right, I'm totally from the future. It, it's, a, it, it's a joke, but that, that, that's a hard joke to, to pull off. And to, to be in that moment, because you need to be believable, you need to believe them. Yeah. And I totally bought it. And so I, I thought Thor, I thought Chris Hemsworth did an amazing job in this movie. But the thing about Thor that I thought he did so wonderful is that on top of all of, or I should say underneath all of this humor and sort of like kind of obnoxiousness mm -hmm. is um, pain. And he did a wonderful job rooting everything in yeah. the real pain that we saw so wonderfully set up by him in Infinity War. My twos were a, a single one, but it's two people, Pepper Potts and Morgan. So for my threes, I gave a lot of people humor in this one. Um, I think because it was a darker, more ominous movie. Mm -hmm. So to bring in the amount of humor that they brought in, I really appreciated. Um, and it was in all different styles. You had the sarcastic rocket, you had the really dry and just kind of like cutting humor that Nebula has. Um, no, no, Nebula. Yeah. You had Hulk, you had Ant-Man, and they're always kind of like off the cuff and a little bit out there and, and humorous. Um, and then of course Thor for all the reasons that we previously mentioned. What did Black Widow receive? She got a five. She's my MCS. 100% ah, all the way. That was, that's probably, that's the right score. It was the fact that when everybody's dealing with oh, the, the tragedy and the horror of what happened and losing people and this and that. She's the one who's still there at Avengers headquarters, checking in with everyone, keeping tabs on everyone. And she goes out on the mission to, to bring back Hawkeye from like the dark yeah. abyss that is his soul at this point. <laughs> Moving on to the plot. I gave this a four out of four as a standalone movie. Maybe the plot isn't that great, but you can't take it as a standalone movie. I think that you just have to take in the fact that this is made to be the culmination of 10 years, and I think they pulled it off uh, beautifully. I mean, 
everything he said, really. <laughs> I, I gave it a 4 out of 4 too. Next up, what role do women play in this movie? We already mentioned that the only two heroes who actually own Thanos in a fight ever <laughs> are women. So obviously this has to get a 4 out of 4. I know there was a lot of flack uh, that this movie got because of what some deem to be the gratuitous female empowerment shot where all the women are running into battle. To all you people, you are wrong. We've had so many gratuitous male running into battle scenes for how many decades now? I say it's about time women got one, and I think they did a great job with it. Four out of four. Four out of four. <laughs> My marriage depends on it. No, uh, yeah, obviously four out of four. I was the weakest backup of your wife there's ever been. Next up is humor. So for me, I gave humor a score of 46. I thought they did a really good job lacing in humorous moments throughout an otherwise dark film. Yeah, uh, I gotta, gave it a 28. Moving on to soundtrack. For me, soundtrack, I gave it a 3 out of 4. This was the best music ever in an Avengers movie, for me, personally. I also gave it a 3 out of 4. Next up are visual effects. And for me, I gave this a 3 out of 4. So it was definitely big screen worthy. I gave it a 4 out of 4. Um, I said my eyes definitely had some eyegasms. Uh, and one of those was the ladies running into battle shot. So next up is love story. Uh, in this one, we decided that the love story was between uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye. It was their love that makes them both actually try to kill each other so that they can kill themselves. Uh, and the other one doesn't have to actually have a sacrifice. Um, plus they go for the soul stone, which is all about love and losing someone that you love. It's Black Widow who is keeping tabs on him the whole time. And then the minute that she has something that might bring his family back, she goes and she gets him. Um, and he says, don't you dare give me hope. And I think that's what Black Widow is to this entire team. Um, we've talked about Iron Man being the heart and soul. We've talked about Captain America being the heart and soul at different points. But if there's anybody who's hope on this team, it's Black Widow. I will say technically hope is actually hope on the Avengers, Hope Van Dyne. She is literally hope. <laughs> I know, it's a wonder I'm married to him. For me, I gave this a 4 out of 4, the love story. Uh, these two ever break up, I'm going to cry my eyes out like I did when I was watching this. <laughs> it's just, uh, every time, every time. Yeah, 4 out of 4, I, I cried lots. Moving on to dialogue. Uh, the dialogue in this film, got another perfect score, I got a 4 out of 4. Uh, I thought I'm going to be quoting this movie for years to come. Not only was the humor uh, spot on, but I think it had so many heartfelt... Uh, poignant moments. One of the lines that I loved, uh, I, by the way, also gave it a perfect score, 4 out of 4, um, but one of the lines that for some reason I don't really remember hearing before, but that has really stuck with me this time around, was Thor's mom who actually said it. What she said was, everyone fails at who they're supposed to be, but the measure of a person is in being who they truly are or how well they succeed at being who they truly are. That was some really solid mom advice. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Thor. Action sequences, that was our next up. Um, we agreed that there were four action sequences, and I gave them a score of three out of four, uh, which brings my total action score to 12. For me, this movie lived and breathed in the moments between battle. I gave it the same score. I gave it a three out of four, which makes my action sequence score a 12. Our final category is heart. How emotionally moving was this film? Huh, huh. Uh, yeah, it, it got a four out of four, but really, this is, you know, we've talked about before uh, with Doctor Strange, it, you know, it got a four out of four in visual effects, and we thought you should have gotten more because, like, you know, just how visually stunning that film was. For Heart, I feel like that's what this one is for Heart. It's, it was so, it was probably the most emotional um, film out of any of the Marvel movies, and including the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I'm a really big fan of, and I think that's maybe the most emotional franchise overall, movie to movie. Everything was bigger, more important, more heartfelt. There was more urgency. There was just, the stakes were really high. Let's move on to our final scores. My final score for Avengers Endgame was 110, but I gave it four fist bumps, uh, which means my total score 114. I think three of those fist bumps were uh, in that end battle. Uh, there were just so many moments where I was, yes, yes, this is great. This is this was, it was total, you know, whatever they say, fanfare or whatever, you know, just, uh, it, it, I loved it. Um, there were a lot of moments in this movie when I kind of got like the chills and like goosebumps. I gave it uh, 144 was my final score, but then I also had two fist bumps for me. Um, specifically, they were when Captain America wields Thor's hammer, and then my other one was Falcon's entrance. 
when, yeah. you know, Captain America's shield has been destroyed, Iron Man, Thor, him, they're all down. This is really looking like, okay, we're this is just the kamikaze moment. We're going to fight until we're dead, and then mm-hmm. there goes the planet. Um, and then you hear on your left. So that makes our total score 130, um, which makes Avengers Endgame a top five film for us. And... Uh, now, if you liked this review and you liked us and, you know, you want to get more of us, then go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We do uh, trailer reactions, we do rankings, reviewing, and... Uh, Merry Murder Bang episodes. Merry Murder Bang episodes. Uh, check those out as well. And uh, if you want to, give this you know, video a thumbs up because that helps it, you know, in the search rankings and more people can find us. And so that means more people can engage and we can have a bigger discussion with everyone uh, down in the comments below. So, go ahead and rewatch and score Avengers Endgame for yourself and put it in the comments down below. Our score was 130. But that's definitely not definitive.